couple of questions. Oh my God. One is, how do we get rid of the plaques in the arteries without statins, for example? And the second question is, if someone is uh, detected with, say, 90% blockage or something, and having stent implanted is good or not? <laughs> uh, good, good. Both questions are good. They are really good questions. You know what it shows? Are you an engineer? Yeah, see, I, how did I know? <laughs> how did I know? Because only an engineer can illogically think that if there is a block, that must be removed. There is a toilet block, it must be removed, no? <laughs> if the toilet pipe is blocked, the water to come, you put a new pipe. But unfortunately, the human body is non-linear and non-Euclidean, so you can't apply your Euclidean linear mathematics there. When the block starts as a child, you start, God starts giving you bypasses. They are called collaterals. So it's good. It's good to have a block. Remember that? Don't try to remove the block. As a matter of fact, we have developed a new system of yoga where you can produce blocks in those rare individuals, unfortunately, you don't have block. I'll show you that. It's very simple. You know the sannyasis in the Himalayas live up to 100 years? You and I don't live. Do you know why? We have too much oxygen here. They have very little oxygen there, up there. So less oxygen means the heart gets uh, to learn to live longer. So with the blocks coming, nature has given the block, the heart will live longer. So don't try to remove that. And whoever has told you that statin will remove the block must have told you or take, taken you up the, the golden path. How about the stent part? I didn't want to answer that. Actually, the stent will worsen the whole thing. Or, or a bypass surgery. No, no. <laughs> Both will worsen the whole thing. Now, you live after that because of the placebo effect. You shouldn't live after that. Actually, bypass surgery is associated with double the risk of heart attack afterwards. Quadruple the risk of stroke afterwards. Sudden death increases afterwards. Heart failure increases afterwards. Nobody tells you this. But your pain goes. Pain goes. Do you know how bypass surgery started? You don't know. And how it became a business? You don't know. If you knew, you wouldn't have bypass surgery. It is not an How I knew you were an engineer? I knew because a lot of people do this. This is this one man called Subramanya Swami. Have you heard of him? <laughs> some years ago, he came to me. Somebody brought him to me with some chest pain. Which is, of course, little... So he, I examined him and said, look, it's nothing to worry. You, you're stressed so much, you know, you little go slow. That was the time he was contesting for the parliament from Madurai. And he said, what are you talking, doctor? There's a block. And I'm an economist. I'm a professor of economics in Harvard. I said, that's the problem. <laughs> that's the problem. No, no, there is a block. He was removed, like you. Then I told him, it's not like that, Mr. Swami. You know, they, they told, explained to me, wasted so much of my time. All free, you know, because these politicians, they don't pay. <laughs> but he would have paid. If I had asked, he would have paid. I didn't ask. <coughs> anyway, he went and had an angioplasty. After that, a lot of problems here. Now he's all right. Because nothing happens to these people. Nature looks after them. So I do this yoga technique for some children, unfortunate children who don't get blocks. And they develop blocks. Or, even without the block, if you did every day this exercise, you get intermittent hypoxia for the heart. The heart lives longer. Now, did you understand the difference between a dynamic structure which is non-linear and a non-linear structure which is a toilet pipe? Or probably you are in the oil company pipe. Oil company pipe is blocked. <laughs> you know. Yeah, but you mean to say modern medicine is not good at all? I said that. I never said that. Modern medical quick fixes are needed for an emergency care, but quick fix only. See, somebody, I, supposing I collapse now here, I can't uh, sit and do yoga and I'll say I'll be all right. Okay? Supposing I fall under a motor car, I can't. You know, I fell, fell under an auto rickshaw the other day. I survived by the skin of my teeth. I thank the auto rickshaw fellow for say, saving my life. This fellow was dead drunk at 5 o'clock in the evening. I was going for a walk on the footpath. This fellow swerved the rickshaw because he wanted to avoid a bus and came right on to me and hit me. If you look at my leg, you will get shocked. You will not come to Kuwait. But I told Jitin I am coming, so I came. And this, because see, this is, now I can't say I will do yoga and get it right. No. 
you have to do something but i didn't do anything but what i am saying is modern medicine has certain role but the percentage of people who benefit by that is 1% of the sick population 99% of the sick population do not require modern medicine it is used for money i'll give you an example one example will do 55 million people in europe do not go to work in a day in winter because of the what's called feverish cold simple disease feverish cold 55 million now these people don't require modern medicine do you know what they require a good dose of ginger garlic and pepper and they'll be fine next day they can go back to work what do we do today we give antibiotics to them send them home if you give antibiotics to viral disease your immune system changes and the immune cytokine response becomes th1 to th2 and most of the th2s are either vasoconstrictors or bronchoconstrictors so by giving antibiotics to a viral disease we produce manufacture asthma is it good or we manufacture a heart attack in elderly people see do you know the amount of people who die of nosocomial infection in the intensive care units we created that thanks to antibiotics so what i am trying to tell you is we have a judicious mix of these things simple things can do that a study in canada showed when a doctor sees a heart attack in society he will have seen 36000 minor illness syndromes there are four minor illness syndromes which we don't even teach in medical medical college properly common cold feverish cold flu like illness and then sore throat simple things now a doctor doesn't know the difference how many doctors can tell the difference between common cold and feverish cold how many doctors know that the best treatment for sore throat is hot water how many of us give antibiotics for a sore throat this is the problem of modern medicine i didn't want to go into that because you know all that if you it will be a big another medical college class difficult but if you are interested there is a book i have written what doctors don't get to study in medical school read that book this book was so badly condemned when it came out in india they wrote this is a rubbish book and this fellow is a mad fellow he english is not good book is not good blah 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 and the book sold all the copies are sold in one week's time thanks to that review <laughs> then it got published in london and the british medical journal's editor wrote this is not a textbook as claimed by the author but certainly in my opinion this is a holy text of medicine written by a prophet it is still going on in the fifth edition and amazon is making sometimes money when it short supply they say 900 dollars for it it's 345 rupees in india <laughs> it is selling so this these things happen this is how commercial things so my son uh, sells that book in america for for the same some 20 dollars or something like that and through amazon he sells it is he a doctor no that's a good, the good thing my doctor daughters don't believe me <laughs> he is an engineer like you